Hey YouTube, this is Robert from Sherburn Outdoors. Hey, today we'll be discussing my experience on renting RVs with the Outdoorsy service with two different vacations that I did with my family to the Grand Canyon and the Yellowstone. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of new content. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey YouTube, so this video will be all about my experience on using the outdoor service or outdoorsy service. I don't own an RV. We for years have been talking about buying one. In January of 2020, way before the pandemic started, we decided we wanted to rent an RV. Not drive across the US, but actually fly out to Las Vegas and do a dream vacation to uh, to um, the Grand Canyon. We wanted to go to Sedona. Uh, Lake Powell and rent a boat, Bryce Canyon, and then we're gonna stay in Las Vegas for a little bit for recovery. So I did a lot of research on several ones and outdoorsy seemed to be a good service. So uh, I went on there, I located, uh, we'd always wanted a class C with the, uh, with the bed over the bunk, uh, over the, uh, the bed actually over the driving area. And uh, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. <laughs> So, so I went on there. I kind of found what I'm looking at. It's a pretty easy service to use. You kind of put a destination in or where you want to go, and it'll identify some RVs. You put in a few more filters, some characteristics about the particular RV that you want to rent. And, uh, you know, uh, some results come back. You uh, basically give some dates to the uh, that you would like. Uh, the owner of that comes back and either agrees or disagrees and then uh, you know you're off and running and they take uh, some fee up front and then uh, once you get a little bit closer they take the rest of the fee and then also take a deposit. So we rented that and then on July 1st we flew out from Atlanta to Las Vegas and we started that whole adventure um, with a first stop in the, uh, um, the Grand Canyon. We stayed there for about three days and then we went to Sedona, we rode ATVs, we did a lot of things. This is where things became very evident that the RV that we've chosen might not uh, be right for us because it was a hundred and something degrees outside and we only had one AC. Uh, after a couple days, we drove up to Lake Powell and to Page, Arizona, did the exact same thing. Uh, it was 104, 105. I thought we were going to die. We only had one AC. We couldn't get the cab down below 90 degrees. It was very tough. Next day after all that, went to Bryce Canyon, like uh, uh, went heavy elevation, you know, woke up and it was low 40s in the morning. So it was great. Whole different experience. From that trip, we learned a lot of things. We learned, um, you know, there were some things that we wanted in an RV. There were some things we didn't like in the RV. And we learned we didn't like a Class C. We, we thought we'd like having the bunk over the cab. We didn't like that at all. Uh, we thought we would, uh, uh, Class A would be much better for us um, with everything. And so we started actually looking around to buy one. Well, the pandemic was in full motion at that point in time. And, you know, there was, uh, there was no RVs out there. So this was in August of 2020 after a very successful. So I sat down again and decided, okay, we'll rent one more year. Let's see if this is uh, uh, something we want. What did we not like in the, in the previous year? Well, one thing I want to mention about renting RVs on Outdoorsy is in, in pretty much anyone who has one right now is renting them like crazy. And RVs in general, unless they're grand design RVs, they're not really meant to be used in everyday operation. You know, they're more for the weekend warrior or the week here and there or that big summer trip, but they're not meant for every day. But since these are being used every single day, um, they are getting a lot of abuse. Um, and so you may get a unit if it's older, like the one we rented had lots of problems uh, in Las Vegas, our very first rental. It was about eight or nine years old. It was in the Southwest where it was really hot. All the cabinets were peeling off. Um, what else did we learn? The leveling jacks didn't work. The locks on the side door of the RV that you open up, they ended up breaking in the middle and we had to climb through the cab the entire time. We only had the one AC unit and the one bathroom. I will tell you that one AC unit was working for its life when we were out there. We definitely learned that we needed another AC unit at that point in time. And we also learned that we, we would like some laundry. Um, you know, we're running around uh, out and doing all of these things, very dirty, and we went through a lot of laundry. Luckily, all the campsites we were staying at did have some laundry, but it was a little bit of a pain to keep them back and forth. So we decided in the next RV we wanted to to, to rent that um, and, and learn about. We'd go with a Class A. 
um, we would have laundry built in. And we'd go with two bathrooms and, uh, and just a little bit bigger this time. And, um, and so I, I went and looked for our second vacation, which we decided we were going to go to Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. And we also decided we wouldn't drive around as much. We spent a ton of time driving around. And so one of the lessons we learned as, as, as novices to this is the RV, whatever one we're renting, it needs to be newer. It needs to be within one or two years old at the max because we know they are renting them quite a bit. So this particular one, we, we live in Atlanta. So we, I found what I was looking for in Salt Lake City. And it's about a four and a half hour drive up to West Yellowstone, which is where we're going to stay. And we're going to use that as a central base. Another thing that we learned... Uh, from the previous year, especially in the pandemic, is in the national parks, none of the buses were running. You need a secondary car or you're going to have to unhook that RV and drive it around all day. So we actually uh, took a, actually drove out this time, my wife did, uh, and the rest of us flew out. And so we had a second car uh, when we were moving around, a Honda Pilot with three rows. It was great for moving around in the Yellowstone. But anyway, this is all about outdoorsy. So, uh, same thing as last time, uh, we flew into Salt Lake City, took an Uber up to, uh, to get the RV, and then we were off and running at this point in time. Now, this RV was only one year old, and it was very well kept. Unlike the previous RV, which is a little bit dirty when we got it, this thing was immaculate. It was like almost new. Um, we didn't have any issues with it at all. It had two bathrooms. It had one of those combo washer and dryers, and, uh, and you know, the trip went really, really good. It had everything we needed. Had horrible gas mileage, which all RVs do. And the other thing it had over the previous RV was the fridge. I meant to mention this earlier. We had an eight cubic foot fridge for five people over eight days. Uh, in the very first one, we had the Class C. It was way too small. The, in this particular one, we went up to a 12 cubic foot. Uh, got a lot more food. I, I, we even could have went bigger. But this one was pretty good for us and allowed us to do what we wanted to do. So here's a picture of, a, of, our, of our unit that we had. It worked really, really good for us. We also learned the things that we, we thought we liked and we didn't like. Uh, this one had the bunks in it. It had the bigger fridge. It had two ACs, uh, which worked much better, but it wasn't near as hot as it was in the Southwest. Um, and then it had the combo washer unit. Let me tell you, that thing sucks. It will only wash about three things. It takes like three and a half hours because it's running off a of 110 uh, for the washer and the dryer. We just ended up going to the to the RV laundry, to be honest with you. Unless you got one or two things. Uh, I got five people. We were going through the laundry. It just didn't work for us at all. What did work for us was having the separate living areas that we didn't have so much in the Class C. Um... Other than having my son sleeping in the uh, uh, kitchen living room area, we had the bunks for the two other kids. We had a back bedroom that was closed off, and then we had two bathrooms, which were great. Those were ideal. They, they set everything up and allowed us to move around. And we learned a lot of things. Um, one one good, good thing for me about the whole outdoorsy experience was uh, I learned what I wanted in an RV before I went and bought an RV. Uh, so now we are in the market for an RV, and we have learned that we don't want one you can drive around. We want a toy hauler. We think that is ideal for us with a loft, where we put two kids in the back on queen beds. My kids are big. They need space. And then my daughter, who's not as tall, can sleep in a loft. And, uh, and then we have our own bedroom, and we can throw all the toys in where we're going, and we can hook it to a truck that we're going to buy. So this experience was very positive for me in that... I, I, I learned what I wanted, and it was on someone else's dime. So now, I, again, I am still waiting for prices in the RV market, and trucks are not available. So I may end up having to rent an RV again next year as we go out to the Black Hills is where we want to go in Mount Rushmore next year up in, uh, in South Dakota. But um, so this was, again, this was a very positive experience for me as a, as a consumer uh, using the service and that I learned that a Class C was not for me. A Class A I liked a lot better, and it was a lot easier to drive, even though it was significantly bigger. Being sleek down the sides and having the different mirror setups, you could see really, really well. Uh, but but the, the thing I learned more than anything is, is that a toy hauler uh, a fifth wheel is what is going to be ideal for my family for future vacations over the next decade to come. So we're really looking forward to our purchase coming up. And I'd like to thank everyone outdoorsy for their service and everyone who puts RVs on there. I know there's been a lot of negativity around people doing stuff. 
we, we took the service very seriously and we were very kind to all the RVs that we interacted with. So hey, if you like all this content, uh, I produce some all the time, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then click the bell and you'll be notified when new things come out. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a great day.